So I've been interested in vaccine mice pretty much ever since they started the company in 2020. For those who don't know, these are essentially the founders of Zowie who left the company to start this whole thing. And I really think this is a modernized take on a Zowie philosophy. Their mice are really, really similar, but I think Vaxi have that slight edge in terms of how they hold up in the 2024 standard. And with that in mind, we have their latest release, the Vaxi XES. It is a smaller version of their XE model, and I think it's a great mouse, not without a couple quirks and one relatively big issue, but still a fantastic mouse. And this mouse costs me $149.98, so essentially $150. But starting off with the build quality, it is a really solid mouse. There's no creaks, no wobbles in the clicks. This is what I think of when I hear the word durability. I'd say it's better than Logitech coatings. You don't need any grip tape, and I, I don't think you need grip tape with Logitech coatings either. Um, but one thing I do want to mention about this uh, is that they do hold up in human climates. So my climate can sometimes be humid. It's one of those areas of the world where it's, uh, you know, sometimes really dry, sometimes really, really wet, sometimes really cold, sometimes really hot. And this coating is always grippy, always feels good. And that's not always the case with the Logitech coating. The skates feel really good too. There's not much interesting to say. You know, I've tried it on slow cloth, fast cloth, hard pads, that sort of thing. And it's consistent, feels really good on all the surfaces. It's the usual 100% PTFE experience. The scroll wheel, however, is quite remarkable. It, it is amongst the best I've ever used. They've really shed their Zowie lineage with this one and they've made a scroll wheel that is perfectly stiff, tactile and smooth. I think it's just fantastic, and I do also really like the grippy texture ridges they've just put on the scroll wheel rubber here. The weight is not exactly mind-blowing, but it's a definite step up from the Vaxi XE. So as you can see, it comes in at 60.5 in between 60 to 61 grams, and that's right in line with their advertising. Again, I'm not going to call this heavy because just a few years ago, this would have been amongst the lightest mice on the market, so it's more than usable. It's just that we're used to 50 and even 40 grams sometimes mice. It would have been nice to see them get this down as low as possible, but if it came down to having a solid shell or one with holes, I definitely would take the solid shell even at 60.5 grams. As for the clicks, they're good. They're a bit heavy for my liking. I typically like a switch in the 55 to 60 gram region and based off the feeling, I'm going to assume that these are 70 gram Huanwo switches that were also in the uh, XE. So other than the fact they are a smidge heavy, they are otherwise perfect. Pretty tactile, no pre-travel, a small bit of post-travel, and even though they are a bit on the heavy side, they are still really spammable and feel really, really premium. Side buttons are also pretty good. I feel zero pre or post-travel, they just feel really, really crisp. And the battery life, I'd love to test this a little bit further if I can, but I'll talk about that later. However, at the 4 kilohertz mode, I'm getting about 30 hours, which is exactly what is advertised. So where I feel this mouse is at its strongest is the shape. Zowie has always had that reputation of being shape kings, and I feel Vaxi is definitely following that road. This is a fantastic shape. It's definitely one of my favorites for this accessible ambi style shape. It's really inoffensive, and while I don't think it's exactly a small size mouse, it is probably more on the low medium end. Uh, I think it's a perfect size for me. The hump is in a really, really good spot. It's flat, so this is kind of uh, reminiscent of a short FK2. It is also just a millimeter wider in the grip width as well. With that being said, this is definitely a fingertip slash claw grip shape. You won't be able to palm grip it unless you have absolute baby hands. But I know this isn't exactly a Zowie mouse, Vaxi and Zowie, two different things. So I do want to not make this in comparison, but I will say, um, with Zowie mice, you do not get nearly as a more, um, I guess, cohesive mouse experience as you do with this. With this, you know, the shape is fantastic, but the clicks are good, the scroll wheel is good, the skates are great. Everything else kind of follows together to make a really great mouse. With Zowie, I feel that the shape is amazing, but everything else kind of just feels meh. And I do also just want to show you the accessories that you get with this mouse. So here's what comes on the box. As you can see, it is completely white. It has a bunch of words and fucking logo. All the words tell you what the thing is. Here it's XES wireless mouse 
B for blue version, 4K version. Same thing here, XES, 4K version. X, the, all the words explain what it is, and there's no obvious, blatant, sort of trashy marketing on this to sell me a product that I've already fucking bought. I'm looking at you, Logitech. We don't need all this marketing on the side of the box for a product I already fucking own. Well, let's talk about what's in the box. Well, this is it. You get the mouse, you get the cable, and you get the dongle. That's it. Some may see this as a bad thing, but I really do hate how every mouse these days come with like 800 different pieces that all end up sitting in their box anyway. I do think it would have been nice to at least include grip tape for the people who want that, but ultimately the essentials are in the box and I can admire that. I also mentioned how this mouse has no software, and that is awesome for me because I fucking hate software, but the implementation is where this mouse starts to have problems. And it's quite simple. I don't know how to change a lot of the settings. Yes, I've read the manual because I uh, kind of fucking lied to you just now. This is also included in the box, and this is a QR code directly to the manual. So yes, I have read the manual. And following the manual, it just doesn't work. And I don't know if it's because I'm doing something wrong or if the mouse has a firmware issue or, or what's going on. But allow me to zoom in and show you what's going on. So first of all, there's DPI. These are three different um, polling rate values here. And then there's a low, medium, and high. I actually thought this was for liftoff distance. This is actually um, click latency. So low, medium, high, click latency here. So with this button, you can change DPI, polling rate, and click latency. The way that works is you click, and let's say you wanna change DPI. Well, you can see when I click, the light's changing, so I can click, and now I'm changing DPI. You can see the color's changing, but if I wanna change polling rate, I click and hold until the polling rate light shows up and then polling rate light shows up. Now I can click polling rate and I'm changing it like this, but you do the same thing for uh, click latency as well. I click and hold and you probably can't see it because my finger is right underneath it, but now I'm changing the click latency. And so I initially thought this was really genius because on the original of XE, you had three separate buttons for each one. But there's also three separate settings that I cannot change with this button. There's motion sync, competitive mode, and then liftoff distance. And so that's when I went to the manual. And on the manual, it says I have to turn off the mouse, flip it over, press the left button, and then turn on the mouse, hold it, and then lights are supposed to start blinking. And they just fucking don't. And so in order to change the other settings, like uh, liftoff distance and motion sync, you hold the scroll wheel for liftoff distance, and hold the right click for the motion sync and then do the whole on and off thing. Yet none of these work. And then there's this button, which uh, I had no idea what it does, but apparently it's a function button. It's a battery status level indicator as well. But when you click it, it's also paged down. So not only is it a battery status indicator, so if you want to know what percentage your mouse is at, you have to click this, but it's also paged down. Why would you do that? So. No software required is a genuine plus with this mouse, but not when you literally can't change settings because you don't know the correct yoga pose you have to be in in order to get the setting to toggle. So overall, I think this is a really good mouse. It's got a lot of good things going for it, with the only distinct con being the controls, which I do think is actually somewhat of a serious problem. I do want to mention that Avaxi has hiked up their prices to 150 They were at 130 It would have been nice to see them keeping it at that price, but I don't think $150 is egregious. And, you know, I do I think you're getting the mouse for the money? Yes. But overall, I think this is a great mouse. Vaxi has proved that they are still a great option, and I really love what they are putting out here. I think I can definitely recommend this mouse in good conscience. I've not heard anything about QC issues, and this mouse is just really, really solid.